Hi guys, Holly Milliken here from South Grafton High School and this is my first video for 2022. In this video we will be focusing on activities based on directed number. Now I have used these activities with my year 7 class and I've tried to incorporate a lot of hands-on sort of activities because they are moving from that primary school style of learning mathematics into that high school style of learning maths. So with all of these activities, I've tried to really focus on utilising those hands-on resources to really engage the students in the learning process. Now, this first activity is called Number Beanbag Toss. For this activity, I use a couple of different resources. The first one being these numbered beanbags from Modern Teaching Aids. And the second one being a number line which goes from negative 20 through to 20, again, from Modern Teaching Aids. I will combine these with a worksheet that I've made up for the students, uh, which will allow them to complete this activity successfully. To complete this activity, students are to choose five numbered bean bags from the bag and toss them onto the number line, as you can see me doing here. They then need to use these two numbers to create a question on their worksheets. My students were working on addition and subtraction here, so I had them create their first five questions using addition and the next five using subtraction, but this could very easily be changed to suit whatever it is your class is learning about. Now, once my students had their 10 questions written and completed, I got them to find a classmate or two and check their working out as well. By implementing this step, I really was just trying to open up opportunities for students to engage in discussions with their peers relating to their mathematical reasoning. To increase the difficulty of this task, rules could be implemented such as uh, making the number on the beanbag negative if it lands face down or positive if it lands face up. This activity can easily be adapted for multiplication and division of negative numbers as well. For my second activity, this is one I like to call roll it out. So for this activity, I will give students a set of dice and a worksheet and get them to use those dice to create different number sentences and then solve those number sentences with a partner or small group, depending on the level of the class. For this activity, students are given a set of dice and asked to create and answer a set of 16 questions. Now, depending on the level of your students, you could either set the goal of this activity as simply arranging a number sentence and answering correctly, or you could make the activity more complex. For the first half, students could be trying to arrange their numbers to make the smallest possible answer. For the second half, they are doing the opposite, using their roles to create the largest possible number for their answer. This activity can be further changed by adding in a multiplication and division die and having students multiply and divide their positive and negative numbers as well, rather than just adding and subtracting them. For this activity, I would usually have students working in pairs so they can discuss different strategies for creating questions, which will give them the largest or smallest value. Not only does this activity focus on students' multiplication, division, addition and subtraction of negative numbers, uh, but it also focuses on this idea that a positive number is in fact bigger than a negative number. So students need to keep that in mind as well as they work their way through this activity. As an extension for this activity, I'll usually change up the size of the dice that the students are using and give them a couple of larger ones. So maybe a 20 sided die or a 50 sided die, depending on the level of the students. Occasionally, I'll also change it so that instead of a single roll, students might have to roll two or even three times and then complete their number sentence from there. This works really well, especially with the higher level students and can really create some challenging questions, which more often than not, will pop up on a whiteboard somewhere and try and solve as a class. Now this final activity is a bit of a fan favourite in my classroom. I'm talking, of course, about Jeopardy. Now, this activity is a really great one to sort of finish off this topic when students are already confident and capable in their knowledge. Um, and it's a really good way to get them working collaboratively together and to iron out any misconceptions that the students might have. For this activity, I use jeopardylabs.com. 
this site can be used as a free resource if you are happy to use the pre-made Jeopardy games um, which are already loaded onto uh, onto this website. So if you're happy to just click on the find a Jeopardy game tab and find games from there that are pre-made, um, it is a free site. If you would like to create a Jeopardy game or edit other people's Jeopardy games, then it is a one-off fee of 20 US dollars. So for my account, I have paid this $20 fee so that I can um, edit, change other people's ones and create my own. So I'm going to go into this one here, which I've created for my year seven class for adding, subtracting and multiplying rational numbers. Now this screen here is the student view. So this is what you would bring up when you were ready to play the game with your students. Prior to this, if you wanted to edit it, you simply click on this edit button here and it takes you into the editor. In here you can uh, delete whole questions, you can move questions, you can add columns and rows, you can add whole categories, um, and if there's any sort of questions that you're like, oh, that might be a bit hard or a bit too easy for my students, it's very easy to pop straight in here and change it all around. Um, in each of these as well, when you open this up, there is actually the ability to insert an image, embed a video, or insert math, which I have found very helpful. Now, once you're ready to show this to your class, you just click save and finish, and then you choose how many teams you would like to play with. So for now, we're just gonna leave it as three. Once you're ready, you just click start. Now, the way that I play it from here is that I will usually start with team one and have them choose any of, so I will say choose a category and a point value. So they might choose adding rational numbers 500. I will then click on this one which opens up the question and they will have between 30 seconds and a minute depending on the level of the class to come up with an answer for me. At this stage I do also allow the other students in the other groups to write answers down on mini whiteboards and if once the team who's chosen the question once they've answered, I allow the other teams to show me the answers they put on their mini whiteboards as well. Um, and if they did get them right, then I will give full points to the team who chose the question and I will give half points to each of the other teams who may have gotten the question correct. Um, I find that this really keeps the students more engaged throughout the entire game rather than only being engaged when it's their team specifically that is uh, answering the question. So they're on for the whole game when you do it that way. So this is a really fun little activity. Um, usually I find it does take most of a lesson. And once you know the level of your own students, you can add or subtract columns and rows to make it harder or easier, longer or shorter. So it's a very versatile game. So there you have it, three different activities to help engage your students in learning about directed number. Now these activities can of course be altered to increase the difficulty or decrease the difficulty as it suits your class and can be used with a range of alternate resources um, and can be adapted to fit your school context. Uh, if you do need any help or you would like any of the resources, please feel free to reach out to me.